poverty risk, challenges and opportunities facing children's social care, and I would like to take this opportunity to highlight some of the main areas. Of course, I think it is important for us as members to thank staff across this council for their continued commitment to improving services and outcomes for vulnerable children and their families. Um, I would also like to thank our Children in Care Council, young people's groups, and parents group for their continued role in developing the service. I'm going to start with the March, the multi-agency safeguarding hub, partly because it has attracted widespread interest. It has also already produced some positive media headlines, and partly, as you see, multi-agency is a bit of a theme for me tonight. Both the, early, um, both the early offer of help and the Troubled Family Program, which have come to shortly, are fully integrated into the March, which has been running a year this month, providing a multidisciplinary model for delivering services to children and families across Toronto, and offering a single point of entry for all referrals and requests for help, both for children and their families. The MASH brings together a wide range of agencies as set out in my report and has significantly improved information sharing and the ability to respond speedily to people's needs. Her early offer of help puts the ethos of early intervention at the heart of her service design and delivery across a range of agencies and is another example of our multi-agency partnership approach to providing effective um, support. By intervening and working with others at the earliest possible stage, we aim to prevent difficulties from escalating while also supporting more families cost-effectively and reducing the need for high-cost specialist provision. Now, we come to troubled families, where the national program focuses on the family as a whole to address key issues such as worklessness, poor school attendance, and antisocial behavior. Thorough successfully completed the program's first phase by turning around not only those families put forward by the government, but others we found too. And now we are co continuing working closely with partners to develop and deliver the expanded second phase. This portfolio can be very emotional. At times it is wonderful seeing the work of our teams do, what that our teams do to help young people and their families, but also but you also get to see death of depravity too. And child sexual exploitation continues to present challenges to agencies locally and nationally. <coughs> Thorox Local Safeguarding Children's Board has led on the development of a multi-agency risk assessment group and a multi-agency sexual exploitation panel. Together with the South End and Essex and Thorox Child Exploitation Group, these three are leading on the development of operational and strategic approaches to tackling <coughs> this scourge. And in partnership with schools and children's services, the LSCP continues to offer the Work Online program, promoting online safety and tackling online exploitation and grooming. I could talk about our children looked after and adoption services all, all night long. But I won't. I just want to say we are seeing a welcome reduction in the numbers of looked after children as we endeavor in, 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 in to continue supporting children remaining safely within their own family. Sadly, there are times when this is impossible, and we must ensure children and young people have a range of high quality placements <coughs> available to promote their needs and welfare. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our foster carers for their dedication and encourage anyone interested in fostering to become a thorough foster carer. So I will ask that you please look online. I am also delighted with our recent agreement to enter into partnership with the Quorum Charity to enhance our recruitment of ad adopters, <laughs> speeding up processes and offering a wide opportunity for our children and this must include opportunity when they're ready to leave our care. We must continue the support and guidance available to them into the future, just like we, we're real parents would do. That's 
why I'm keen to see a further expansion and publicity of staying put arrangement that allows young people to remain in their foster placement after they reach 18. I would like to thank the Corporate Parenting Committee for continuing its fine work, and I continue to be impressed by the creativity and innovation of children in care council. I would encourage each and every one of us in this chamber as corporate parents to consider how their daily actions have, have improved outcomes for looked after children and caregivers. Briefly, I would like to congratulate the Youth Offending Service for the early complimentary report it received from my Majesty's Inspectorate in April. And to close, I wish to focus on December serious case received, uh, review published by the LSEB. This related to a young woman. Sorry, not to not Just. Yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah, I'll be quick. I just need to mention this, uh, Madam Mayor. I mean, the, 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 what I was talking about is about the um, serious case review, which refers to the report of Julia and uh, it was event between 2010 and 2012. So the report identified learning for several agencies, including the council, and as a portfolio holder, I deeply regret this failing identified in the report. And I must say the LSCB, LSCB Children's Review on Scrutiny, and how I continue to monitor the progress and impact of serious case review action plan with officers. Anyway, we indeed, the service has and must continue to improve uh, to improve based on the learning from both local and national and, and national serious case reviews. To close, the service continues to face challenges in meeting its budget in increasing difficult times with increasing demands and increasing expectations while still having to make the required budget savings. Thank you. I would ask if anybody has any questions. Tell me why they looked after children in the therapeutic foster care um, cases have significantly better outcomes than those in the normal foster care placements, and what strategy she's going to use to actually close the gap? Thank you, um, Councillor Leachel. Um, the comparison you are making is obviously um, we have um, uh, children that have higher needs, in, obviously, in, in, the, in, the, in the appropriate um, care or foster care, uh, care homes. And for, for yourself to say that they have better care is something that, uh, outcome. better outcome in their, life. in, 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 the, in, in their lives. <coughs> You're saying they have better outcome in, in, the, in, the, in their life. I, I mean, I, I think as we have children, children are, are different, you know, in, 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 in what they, they end up to, to do in, in life. And we are, monitoring the outcome for all the children, and no, none of them are, are, are dealt with uh, in a different, you know, in, in a favorable or unfavorable way. So, um, what you said.
and if it's something that you want to bring back to the committee for us to have a look at, then I'm, 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 I welcome that. But we do have passion for all the children, and the majority of the children, after care, they're doing, you know, they're doing well, and there are records there to be seen. But we can actually look, and it could be one of the areas you want us to review at the Public Parenting Committee, and I'm, I welcome that. Asian sister has been identified as a high-risk area again. It's, all, it's always been a high-risk area ever since I've sat on the committee. We accept the fact that the, that the child social care budget is need-led and can be quite uh, run and unstable because of the children coming in and out of the care system. But our, our own staffing cost is not an unstable quality. So why after now several years of the trial are we still identifying agency staff as a real risk? Um, Councillor Alden, as you as you're aware, it's a national issue in terms of retention and recruitment of staff. So if we have agency staff, did you say something? Yeah, I'm talking about town council staff, not just social workers. I, I'm I'm sorry, uh, my remit is you know social workers and children's social care team. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the agency staff that we are employing as an authority. My yeah, remit are the issue us. You should be going through me. Yeah. I apologise. Yeah, I was just going to reiterate that my remit is within uh, children's social care, <coughs> and we're talking about agency staff, and I know that the level of agency staff that we have is, I mean, we have high level of agency staff <coughs> within the children's social care, and the majority of social workers, and we have experienced social workers, and we are, we are actually lucky that we are, the retention of them is good, so that we have um, continued, um, you know, the work that we have to do with the, with the children. So it's an area, and then it's a, it's a national issue about having agents, because most of the social workers, it's about, you know, the pay, that, that the, the pay, the comparative pay that they will get in, in inner city is different from what we offer in, in Toro. So it's an area that we are lucky to have them, and I commend them for the work they do. So let's call for parent. I thank you very much. Um, I am a little disappointed, though, that we only have seven lines in this report that are dedicated to care leavers. Care leavers are vitally important. We've supported them through to this stage. We need to carry on that support. In my life outside of the council, I've seen many care leaders be evicted from their properties <coughs> because they're unaware of how to hold down a tenancy. And we've got statistics here that uh, we've seen an increase from 35% to 42% of care leavers being in employment, education and training. I think that's a really sad figure. I know we've got aspirations to get it up to 70%. But we need to be looking at higher than that. We need to be able to give our care leaders all the support. And what I'd like to know from you, Council, is what plans and what timescale have you got so that we can actually get these care leaders into employment, training, or further education? Uh, Councillor McPherson, for your kind words to start with. And uh, I know the issue of care leaders is, um, is very important. And you will see in the report that our uh, our ultimate aim is to get that to 95 to 100 percent of care. But bearing in mind that some um, have complex disability and also some have um, you know, mental, you could have mental issues that we can just not um, be um, setting ourselves up to, to fail. But we are, it is something that we are monitoring all the time. The, li the little um, increase, it is very, very, you know, to me, it's so. You know, it's a little increase from 35% to 42%, and our target is 70%. And you can be assured that we're working towards get, getting 